Unit 15. This coffee is terrible. Pete Hall is starting a new job. Listen to the conversations. Uh, is this your hammer or mine? It's mine. I think yours is over there. Oh, yeah, thanks. First day on the job? Yeah. I'm Pete Hall. Hi, Pete. I'm Al Johnson. How do you like it here? It's okay. The pay's good. Yeah, it is. I think I'm going to like construction work. Where did you work before? In a shoe factory. Oh, how did you like it? Well, not too much. The hours were long and the pay was terrible. Oh, I'm really tired. Where can I get a cup of coffee around here? There's a coffee shop on the corner. Can I get you anything? Uh, could you bring me a donut? Sure. Yuck. This coffee is terrible. Yeah, I always bring coffee from home. Good idea. Where do you eat lunch? Well, I usually bring my lunch. But sometimes I eat at the restaurant across the street. The food's not great, but it's fast and cheap. What would you like? A hamburger and french fries. To stay or to go? To go, please. Something to drink? Uh, how's your coffee? Well, I never drink it. Then that's all. Now listen to the conversations again and repeat each line. Uh, is this your hammer or mine? It's mine. I think yours is over there. Oh, yeah. Thanks. First day on the job? Yeah, I'm Pete Hall. Hi, Pete. I'm Al Johnson. How do you like it here? It's okay. The pay's good. Yeah, it is. I think I'm going to like construction work. Where did you work before? In a shoe factory. Oh, how did you like it? Well, not too much. The hours were long and the pay was terrible. Oh, I'm really tired. Where can I get a cup of coffee around here? There's a coffee shop on the corner. Can I get you anything? Uh, could you bring me a donut? Sure. Yeah, this coffee is terrible. Yeah. I always bring coffee from home. Good idea. Where do you eat lunch? Well, I usually bring my lunch. But sometimes I eat at the restaurant across the street. The food's not great, but it's fast and cheap. What would you like? A hamburger and french fries. To stay or to go? To go, please. Something to drink? Uh, how's your coffee? Well, 
I never drink it. Then that's all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. How's your coffee? Yeah, how's your coffee? This coffee is terrible. How's yours? This is the topic of our lesson today. Well, Peter Hall is starting a new job at a construction site, an area where a building is being constructed or built. He meets a co-worker Al Johnson and makes small talk with him about aspects of the job such as pay, hours and working conditions. He also finds out where to get food and coffee in the area. Construction workers uh, bring lunch from home or purchase it from a mobile coffee truck or a nearby sandwich shop. In addition to a lunch period, they may get a brief rest period called a coffee break. Pete and Al are both wearing hard hats. Construction workers are sometimes referred to as hard hats because of the helmets they wear to protect themselves from falling debris. Now a little bit about the language. A construction site is an informal setting where the word ya yeah is likely to be said instead of yes. In spite of the informality of the situation, Pete and Al's conversation has a polite tone because the two workers have just met. In part D, we hear a sound such as yach. These sounds represent a noise made to show disgust. It is only used in informal setting. In another part, in the restaurant, the waitress says to stay or to go, to find out if the customer will eat there or take the order out. Now, as a reinforcement of our practice, we listen to the conversations one more time. Unit 15. This coffee is terrible. Pete Hall is starting a new job. Listen to the conversations. Uh, is this your hammer or mine? It's mine. I think yours is over there. Oh, yeah, thanks. First day on the job? Yeah. I'm Pete Hall. Hi, Pete. I'm Al Johnson. How do you like it here? It's okay. The pay's good. Yeah, it is. I think I'm going to like construction work. Where did you work before? In a shoe factory. Oh, how did you like it? Well, not too much. The hours were long and the pay was terrible. Oh, I'm really tired. Where can I get a cup of coffee around here? There's a coffee shop on the corner. Can I get you anything? Uh, could you bring me a donut? Sure. Yuck. This coffee is terrible. Yeah, I always bring coffee from home. Good idea. Where do you eat lunch? Well, I usually bring my lunch. But sometimes I eat at the restaurant across the street. The food's not great, but it's fast and cheap. What would you like? A hamburger and french fries. To stay or to go? To go, please. Something to drink? Uh, how's your coffee? Well, 
I never drink it. Then that's all. Now listen to the conversations again and repeat each line. Uh, is this your hammer or mine? It's mine. I think yours is over there. Oh, yeah. Thanks. First day on the job? Yeah, I'm Pete Hall. Hi, Pete. I'm Al Johnson. How do you like it here? It's okay. The pay's good. Yeah, it is. I think I'm going to like construction work. Where did you work before? In a shoe factory. Oh, how did you like it? Well, not too much. The hours were long and the pay was terrible. Oh, I'm really tired. Where can I get a cup of coffee around here? There's a coffee shop on the corner. Can I get you anything? Uh, could you bring me a donut? Sure. Yeah, this coffee is terrible. Yeah. I always bring coffee from home. Good idea. Where do you eat lunch? Well, I usually bring my lunch. But sometimes I eat at the restaurant across the street. The food's not great, but it's fast and cheap. What would you like? A hamburger and french fries. To stay or to go? To go, please. Something to drink? Uh, how's your coffee? Well, I never drink it. Then that's all. All right, guys, time for our comprehension testing. Say right, wrong, or I don't know. Number one, the example Pete lost his hammer. It is wrong, but why wrong? Any idea? Hmm. The point is in part A, uh, we can see Al says, it's mine, I think yours is over there. Yeah? So the hammer was not lost. The fact of the matter is that only Pete couldn't locate it. Yeah, that's the point. Number two. It's Pete's first day at work. What do you think? Yes, that's right. In part B, Al says, first day on the job. Pete says, yeah, I'm Pete Hall. That's right. Number three. Pete is tired and wants a cup of coffee. What do you think? That's right. Yeah. Part C. Yeah, shows it to us. 
Yeah, Pete says, oh, I'm really tired. Where can I get a cup of coffee around here? Number four, the waitress at the restaurant likes hamburgers. What do you think? Yeah, the fact is there's no information about this, so we say I don't know. Number five. Al always brings coffee from home. What do you think? That's right, because in part D uh, we can see uh, Pete says this coffee is terrible. Al says, yeah, I always bring coffee from home. Uh, number six, Pete is going to eat his hamburger at the restaurant. What do you think? The answer is wrong because in part E, the waitress says to stay or to go. Pete says to go, please. Yeah. Okay, so number seven. The waitress likes the coffee at the restaurant. What's your opinion? That is wrong because the waitress says, I never drink it. Okay. Now exercise two. Find another way to say it. Yeah. We must find the alternatives from the conversations, in the conversations. Number one, it's my hamburger, it's mine. Okay. Number two, do you want anything? What do you think? What do we have in the conversations? Yeah, can I get you anything? That's right. Number three, do you want to eat your food here or not? In the lesson, we have to stay or to go. That's right. Number four. Is your coffee good or bad? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. How's your coffee? Number five. What do you think of this job? We should say, as an alternative, how do you like it here? Number six. It's not expensive. What do you think? It's cheap. All right. So this is the first part. Let's get ready to go to try this. Here we can see some items, some merchandise, and some locations, some places where we can find them. It's not a bad practice to try it. Or in other words, to try this. Okay, it says match the items with the places where you can buy them. You can buy some of the items in more than one place. Next, practice the conversation asking where you can get different things. So we don't go to that part. We only practice uh, the first part. We have some aspirin, a newspaper, some postcards, some milk, some stamps, some eggs, some shampoo, a magazine. And we have four places, four locations, post office, drugstore or pharmacy, newsstand or grocery store. Let's see where we can find each one of these items. First, for some aspirin. What do you think? Where can we find it? Part B. Drugstore or pharmacy, of course. Then, newspaper. Where can we find newspapers? In what 
locations. So, one place we can find them is drugstore. Yeah. Another place which is possible to find them is newsstand and also uh, in grocery stores we can find newspapers. So the next item is some postcards. Where do you think we can find them? One location to find them is uh, post office, of course. Another location is newsstand, right? And also it is possible um, in drugstores to find them. That's right. Now some milk. Where can we find it? At the grocery store. All right. All right, folks. Now another useful and practical exercise to help our conversational skill. It says, Jane Turner is looking for a new job and calls her father's friend Bob Wilson, a biologist, for advice. Act out the conversation. Use this information. Jane is a lab technician at Brookdale Hospital. Before that, she was a lab technician at Oakland Laboratory. Jane doesn't like her job. It's interesting, but the hours are long. Her old job was hard work, and the pay was terrible. On the right side, we have three different ads related to that job. Yeah, One of them is about laboratory assistant technician the other one is laboratory technician and the last one also laboratory technician right so the question beside this is uh, which of these jobs would Jane like now let's look at the conversation and see how we can fill in the blanks by getting a uh, general inspiration yeah how to get inspired by looking at the whole conversation to understand how we can fill in the blanks all right now i guess you're ready let's begin uh, mr william says hello jane says hello mr wilson this is jane turner mr wilson Hi Jane, how are you? Then Jane something. After that says, but I need some help. What do you think she says? Yeah, she says, I'm fine, thanks, but I need some help. Or, I'm fine, thank you, because it's a formal conversation. Instead of thanks, we'd better say thank you. I'm looking for a new job. Mr. Wilson says, where do you work now, Jane? Jane says, what do you think? At Brookdale Hospital, I'm a lab technician. Mr. Wilson says, so you don't like your job? What do you think she says? Jane says, not too much. It's interesting, but the hours are long. Mr. Wilson says, where did you work before that? What do you think Jane says? At Oakdale Laboratory. Mr. Wilson says, how did you like that job? And what do you think Jane says? It was hard work and the pay was terrible. Mr. Wilson says, well Jane, maybe I can help you. Uh, I'll call you back tomorrow morning. And finally, what do you think Jane says? She says, thank you, or thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Well, you know, guys, you may ask yourselves, how can this exercise help me 
Well, the point is, when we concentrate on how we can complete the conversation, yeah, we are, uh, in fact, doing a very practical job about improving our conversational skills. We are creating things in our minds. Yeah? It's a very practical work. Now, a total view of our Comprehension Dialogue section. Is your postcard from the Arnos? George and Loretta are in their hotel room. One, listen in. Back in their hotel room, George and Loretta are talking while Loretta writes some postcards. Read the statements below. Listen to the conversation and say true or false. Now let me see. Do the Pappas's live at 25 or 27? Oh, Loretta. I'll put 27. Loretta. Yes, dear. I'm hungry, Loretta. Could you call room service and get us something to eat? I hear there's a nice little restaurant just down the street. Oh, Loretta, I can't move. Okay, dear, I'll call in a few minutes. I just have two or three postcards to write. Are these statements right or wrong? One, Loretta doesn't want to go to a restaurant. Two, George has a sunburn. All right, guys, let's check the answers. Number one, Loretta doesn't want to go to a restaurant. What do you think? The answer is wrong. Yeah, because first she suggested going to the restaurant. Number two, George has a sunburn. What do you think? That's right. He has a terrible sunburn. And he even says he can't move. It's that hard. Your turn. Complete the postcard for Loretta. We have some information. It says, Loretta tells Nick and Stella about their trip using the phrase, wonderful trip. Then asks about the weather in New York, then talks about the weather in Miami using the word beautiful, then sends greeting to Christine. So on the postcard we have something like this. Dear Nick and Stella, greetings from Miami Beach. We are having a wonderful time. How's the weather in New York? The weather in Miami is wonderful. Say hi to Christine for me. See you soon. Love, Loretta and George. P.S. We miss you. 3. Comprehension Dialogue. Listen to the conversation. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on Willow Street... Excuse me, miss, is this yours? Oh, yes, it is, thanks. Wait a minute. I got a postcard just like it. Is yours from the Arnos? Why, yes. Do you know them? Well, they're my neighbors. Really? They're mine, too. Oh, yeah? Where do you live? In that building over there, number three. Me, too. I live in 1B. No kidding. I live right above you in 2B. <gasps> oh, then you must be Carolyn Laval. Duval. And you're... Don't tell me. J. Pierce. Right. The J is for John. What do you play? Huh? Oh, you mean this. I play the saxophone. Really? Do you play any jazz? Sure. I love jazz. I do, too. I play the string bass. All right. The comprehension check. Number four, figure it out. Say right wrong or I don't know. Number one, Carolyn got a card 
from the Arnus, and John did too. It is right. How do we know it is right? So in the beginning, John says, Excuse me, miss, is this yours? He finds something on the ground. And Caroline says, yes, it is. And then he says, wait a minute. I got a postcard just like it. Is yours from the Arnos? And she says, yes. So that's uh, right, as we see. Number two, Caroline lives at 3 Willow Street, and John does too. What do you think? The answer is right, because in part two, uh, John says, where do you live? And Carly says, in that building over there, number three. Then John says, me too, I live in 1B. Number three, Carolyn likes jazz, and John does too. So, what is the answer? The answer is right. Because in the last part, uh, Carolyn says, do you play any jazz? John says, sure, I love jazz. Carolyn says, I do too. Number four, Carolyn plays the string bass, and John does too. What do you think? The answer is wrong, because John plays the saxophone, and Carolyn plays the string bass. Number five, Carolyn plays well, and John does too. What do you think? The answer is, we don't know. There is no information about it. Now, let's go to exercise five to make a conversation. Your turn, says Caroline and John, continue their conversation. How do you think it ends? Act out the conversation and finish John's part. Now I guess you are ready. Let's do it step by step. On the left side, Caroline asks John if he is a professional musician. In the form of conversation, Carolyn says, are you a professional musician? On the right side for John we have, John says no, ask Carolyn if she is, starting with are you. John says, oh no, are you? Then in the box on the left side, Carolyn says she is not either, she says she is an actress. Carolyn says, no, I'm not either. I'm an actress. Then on the right side, in the box, John thinks that's exciting. Ask Carolyn if she likes her job. In the conversation, John says, oh, that's exciting. Do you like your job? And then on the left side, Carolyn says she likes it a lot, invites John to go out for coffee. In the conversation form, Carolyn says, I like it a lot. Listen, would you like to go out for coffee? Sure. And then the possible ending. Let's um, see what we can put on the right side in the empty box. Let's think a little. Okay. After Carolyn invites him uh, to go out for coffee, John can say something like this. John can say, sure, that sounds great. Or, oh, I can't right now, but how about tomorrow afternoon? Then Caroline can say, sure, it sounds perfect. What time? And then uh, John can say, three o'clock. Is three o'clock okay? Caroline can say, that's fine. Three o'clock is fine with me. See you then. Six. Say it right. Practice this conversation. First, listen to the conversation. Where do you work? At the press. Where did you work before? At the record. Now listen to the conversation again and repeat each line. Where do you work? 
at the press. Where did you work before? At the record. Now time to pay attention to our grammar points. Possessive pronouns, mine and yours. We know pronoun is a word which is used instead of a noun, right? It replaces a noun. And possessive pronoun is a word which is used instead of a noun and at the same time shows a possession shows that someone has something or something has something else right we have an example in our frame it says is this your book or my book then is this yours or mine so the first one on the top your book that your is possessive adjective right because there is a noun with it and then my book my is also possessive adjective because it is used with a noun but uh, at the bottom yours is a possessive pronoun because there is no other noun with it right is this yours or mine so yours and mine are alone yeah, because of this they are called possessive pronouns right I give you one more example yeah uh, I say this isn't your car it is mine or we can say it is your car it is yours yeah so your car is replaced with yours okay or uh, this is your home it is yours yours is a possessive pronoun which is used instead of your yeah, possessive adjective okay let's see about exercise one complete the conversations Use mine or yours in your answer. Okay, let's do it. The next point to talk about is frequency adverbs. Frequency means repetition, an activity that happens more than once. It is repeated. Adverbs are the words describing verbs, explaining the verbs how the verbs are done you know we have an example yeah, in the frame I always walk to work yeah, always is a frequency adverb which describes walk walking right uh, then I usually walk to work I sometimes walk to work I never walk to work so the placement of these adverbs is after the subject and before the verbs right as you can see always usually sometimes never are used before walk which is a verb there's one exception right and that is the verb be am is are was and where right they are used after the verb be as you can see in the frame I'm always late I'm never late I'm usually late right now these were affirmative sentences now the question form right so naturally we use do and does for the present tense like this the example that we have the frame on the left side do you always walk to work 
Do you usually walk to work? Do you sometimes walk to work? Do you ever walk to work? Are you always late? Are you usually late? Are you sometimes late? Are you ever late? Ever here means at all. Are you late at all? Right? Then we have the uh, emphatic form right at the bottom. Usually I walk to work. Sometimes I walk to work. Usually I'm late. Sometimes I'm late. When we put these frequency adverbs in the beginning of a sentence, we make it emphatic, right? We emphasize yeah, on that activity. Always shows almost 100% frequency of that activity. Usually shows about 90% frequency of that activity. Sometimes uh, shows 50% frequency of the activity and never shows nothing, 0% frequency of that activity. Okay, so we have two exercises about this. Exercise 2, answer questions about each of these people. Another student will ask the questions, use the words in parentheses. And then exercise 3, complete the conversations, use the words in parentheses. Alright, so it's time to test our comprehension. Let's see how we do it. Lesson 43. World Note. Here is an article about what people around the world eat for breakfast. Listen as you read the article. To begin their day, many people around the world wake up and have a cup of coffee or tea. But as for what people eat in the morning, the variety is almost as great as the number of countries. We were not able to include all of the responses we received, but we think you'll find these examples interesting. Olivier Barr, Nancy, France. My favorite thing for breakfast is croissant. Croissant are a kind of bread, and in my family we always have them on Sundays. We get them fresh from the bakery down the street. I have mine with a cup of hot chocolate. My parents have coffee. Kamala Natarajan, Madras, India. Besides coffee, we have several things for breakfast. For example, there is idli, a kind of warm rice cake, and dosa, a thin pancake made with rice and lentils. Also, there is something called upma, which is ground wheat cooked with spices. We eat all this with chutney, a kind of jam made from coconut or mangoes. Costa Vasos, Saloniki, Greece. A simple breakfast of butter and honey on fresh bread is what my family eats. We also have coffee, good strong Greek coffee. Sometimes we eat yogurt and we put honey in that too. Shirley Luck, Leeds, England. I like a big breakfast in the morning. Fried eggs and bacon, or maybe porridge, kippers and toast. Porridge is boiled cereal, and kippers are a type of smoked fish. And, of course, I always have a pot of good breakfast tea. Cesar Mendoza, Monterrey, Mexico. My favorite breakfast is huevos rancheros. Huevos rancheros are fried eggs served with hot sauce on top of fried beans and a tortilla. When I have them for breakfast, I don't need any lunch. Yoko Higuchi, Tokyo, Japan. When I have time, I have a bowl of hot rice with a raw egg and some dried fish. Sometimes just coffee and toast is good too. In any case, I usually don't eat much for breakfast. Okay, now our comprehension test is in the form of true and false and it doesn't say, right? 
So we have six sentences and based on what we heard and what we understood, we must identify them as true, false, or it doesn't say. Now another comprehension test for us on your own. How do you like your job? So Janet Caruso, a clown, says, I love my job. I like to laugh and love people, especially children. I can also travel a lot. Sandy Jackson, park ranger. I love my job. I like the outdoors a lot. I'd like to marry a man who shares my love of nature. Barbara Summers, accountant. Well, it's a job that I do well. I was always good in math. It pays well too, but sometimes I think I'd like to do something more exciting. Pete Bennett, sanitation worker. I don't really like my job, but what else can I do? I have a family and we need the money. George Rivas, veterinarian's assistant. I like my job just fine. It's only a part-time job now, but I'd like to get more experience and make it a full-time job. Clifford Hall, policeman. Sometimes I like my job and other times I hate it. My wife doesn't like it at all. She thinks it's dangerous, but the work is important. Now, the instruction says, here are some people's opinions about their jobs. Choose A, B, or C. So, take a look at the items and think about them for a couple of minutes. Okay, now I guess you're ready. Number one, the clown likes her job a lot. So, this is an example. Number two, the blank like their jobs. So, accountant and the park ranger, policeman and the clown, veterinarian's assistant and the park ranger. Which one do you think is correct? Yes, that's right. Part C is correct. Yeah, the veterinarian's assistant and the park ranger like their jobs. Number three. They blank aren't sure that they like their jobs. Policeman and the clown, accountant and the policeman, veterinarian's assistant and the park ranger. Which one? B. That's correct. The accountant and the policeman aren't sure that they like their jobs. Number four. They blank doesn't like his job. Accountant, policeman, sanitation, worker. Which one is correct? Yeah, part C is correct. The sanitation worker doesn't like his job. Number five. We know that the blank is married. Clown, policeman, park ranger. Which one? Who's married? The policeman part B. That's right. Yeah, because he mentions uh, his wife. That he says, my wife doesn't like it at all. Uh, number six. We know that the blank is single. Clown, policeman, park ranger. Which one? Part C. The park ranger is single. That's right. Unit 15. Exercise 1. Complete the conversations. Choose A or B. 1. Where can I get some good food? 
two. Is that yours or mine? Three. Can I get you anything? Four. Are you sleepy? Five. Is this my umbrella? Six. How did you like that job? It was hard work. How was the pay? Exercise two. Follow the conversation. Mark the box next to the sentence you hear. Choose A or B. You're new at the company, right? That's right. How do you like the job? The hours are long, and I'm always tired, but the money's good. Where did you work before? I worked in an office in Washington. Would you like more coffee? Yeah, please. Yes, please. So, how did you like that job? It was okay. Wait, is this coffee yours or mine? I think it's yours. Mine's here. Where do you usually eat lunch? I usually eat in the office, but sometimes I stop here for coffee. Well, it's time to go back. Yeah, coffee breaks are always too short. Exercise seven. Listen to the conversations. Write there, there, or there for each one. One. Is this mine or yours? It's mine. I think yours is over there. Two. What are they doing? Right now they're making dinner. Three. Where can I get a soda? There's a drugstore over on Gillette Road. Four. Where did you work before? In that building over there. Five. Where are your children? Upstairs doing their homework. Six. How do you like this restaurant? It's not expensive, but their food is terrible. Seven. There's going to be a party on Saturday. Do you want to go? I'd love to. Eight. Do you know them? They're my neighbors. Nine. Where are your friends? It's after nine. Oh, they're usually late. Exercise eight. Listen to the conversations. Write the missing word in each blank. One. How's the coffee here? Well, I never drink it. How's the coffee here? Well, I never drink it. Two. Does she usually eat lunch here? Usually she eats in the office, but sometimes she has coffee here. Does she usually eat lunch here? Usually she eats in the office. But sometimes she has coffee here. Three. How does your husband usually get to work? Sometimes he takes the bus and sometimes the train, but he never walks. How does your husband usually get to work? Sometimes he takes the bus. And sometimes the train.
but he never walks. Four. Excuse me for asking, but how old are you? Seventy-two. And you're taking a new job? Sure. It's never too late. Excuse me for asking, but how old are you? Seventy-two. And you're taking a new job? Sure, it's never too late. Five. How old is your daughter? Six. So is mine. When does she go to bed? Usually at about eight. She's always in bed before nine. How old is your daughter? Six. So is mine. When does she go to bed? Usually at about eight. She's always in bed before nine. Six. How do you like this job? Well, this kind of job never pays well, and sometimes the hours are long, but it's always interesting. How do you like this job? Well, this kind of job never pays well. And sometimes the hours are long. But it's always interesting. Now a selected exercise for you, which is important for our conversational skill. It says, put the words in the correct order, uh, then write the conversation, add punctuation where necessary. So on the left side, we have uh, words in chaos, you know, they are disorganized. We must organize them and make a logical conversation out of them. All right, let's think about it for a short time. Okay, I guess you're ready now. Uh, on the top we have an example. It says, how do you like it here? Then Anita says, I like it a lot, but it's hard work. I think the people are really nice, or I really think the people are nice. Jan says, where did you work before? Anita says, at the Central Hospital on 4th Street. Jan says, how did you like it? Anita says, well, it wasn't too interesting. Exercise 4 is also important. It says, complete the conversation, write the missing word in each blank. Don's going to have breakfast before he goes to work. One. Dan says, I'm new in the neighborhood. Where can I get breakfast? The man says, there's a good breakfast place around the corner. Now for the rest, we have to think for a while. All right, now. Waitress says, would you like some coffee? Dan, yes please. Waitress, and what would you like to eat? Dan, two fried eggs and toast. Waitress, okay. Do you want anything else? Dan, yes please. A glass of orange juice. Three. Danny, hi Dan, how are you doing? Dan, great. Danny, how do you like your new job? Dan, it's okay. It's pretty interesting and the hours aren't bad. Danny, well, time to go. Dan, are these your cigarettes or mine? Danny, I think they're yours. Mine are right here. 
This exercise is also very important. Read what Jackie says, then write about her job. Use always, usually, sometimes, and never. First, we read the information in the frame, in the balloon. Hi, I'm Jackie. I work at an advertising agency in the city. I take the train to work every day. I like to go out to lunch, but it's expensive. So I only go on payday. I get tired in the afternoon. I work late on Fridays, but it's okay. I don't have to work weekends. Now we write about her as the third person singular. So we begin like this. This is Jackie. She works at an advertising agency in the city. She always takes the train to work. She always or she usually goes out to lunch on payday. She always or usually gets tired in the afternoon. She always or usually works late on Fridays. She never has to work weekends. Exercise 6. Read the want ads and the conversation, then answer the question. Right. So we have a conversation like this between Henry and Irene. Henry, you know, Irene, I'm looking for a new job. Irene, yeah? How are you doing? Henry, great. There are three fantastic jobs in today's paper. They offer interesting work and great pay. I'm going to call them right now. Irene, oh, let me see the ads. Henry, I think these jobs are terrible. They don't really say how much about the jobs. And the West Side Sales Agency, I worked for them last year. Henry, how did you like it? Irene, it was awful. The pay was terrible. The hours were long, the work was boring, really boring. Henry, well, where can I look for a job? Irene, did you try the job placement office here at school? Henry, no. Irene, the people there can help you find a good job. Now the questions, and based on the information, we have to provide answers. All right? Are you ready? Number one. Where did Irene work last year? At West Side Sales Agency. Number two. How did she like her job? It was awful. The pay was terrible. Number three. Where is the West Side Sales Agency? It's at 331 Hesperian Boulevard. Number four. Who works at Temporary Secretarial Service? Mr. Marx works there. Number five. What is Irene's opinion of the jobs in the newspaper? She thinks they are terrible. Number six. Where is Henry going to look for a job? is going to look at the job placement office. Okay, exercise nine. Act out the conversation. Take the part of the waiter or waitress or the customer. We are all familiar with this kind of exercise, right? So based on the information and the instructions, we have to make an active conversation. So, on the left side for waiter or waitress, number one says, 
ask what the customer would like. So we say, what would you like for lunch or dinner? Then for the customer, it says, order a hamburger and salad. So the customer says, I'd like to have a hamburger and salad. Then on the left side for waiter, take the order and ask if the customer wants something to drink. When we take the order, we write on the paper, right? We say, okay, a hamburger and a salad. Do you want anything to drink or do you want something to drink? Then for the customer number two, it says, order a glass of milk. So, he or she says, I want a glass of milk, please. Then we go to the left side. The waiter or waitress brings the order, says, here you are. So, here you are. And then for the customer, number three, ask for some french fries. So, the customer says, uh, would you bring me some French fries, please, or I'd like to have some French fries, please. For the waiter, we have this information. Bring the French fries, say, here you are. So the waiter brings them and says, here you are, your French fries. Then on the right side, number four, say thank you and ask where the restrooms are. So customer says, thank you very much. Uh, where are the restrooms, please? And we go to the left side. The waiter or waitress says, say where the restrooms are. For example, uh, the waiter says, go straight ahead. Yeah. Then the restrooms are on your left. Then for the customer, ask for the check. So he or she says, may I have the check, please? So this is how we make a conversation out of some information and some instructions. Complete the conversations. Write the correct pronoun in each blank. K is looking for her glasses. K says, I can't find my glasses. Hal says, you lost them again? K, yes, maybe I left them upstairs. Hal, here they are, on the table. K, no, those are yours. Hal, no, they aren't. These are mine. Then the grandmother did I leave my glasses here? Oh, here they are. Okay, good. Now you find yours. But where are mine? Write questions about the people below and answer them. Use the words in parentheses. Part 1. Steve and Joyce don't like to eat out. So they take their lunches to work. Do Steve and Joyce ever eat out? No, they never eat out. Or, no, they never do. They always take their lunches to work. Part 2 Maria likes to walk to work, but when it rains, she takes the bus. Does she always walk to work? She usually walks to work. Sometimes she takes the bus or she sometimes takes the bus. Part 3 Jay and Carol have a car but they don't drive to work. They take the bus to work and on nice days they ride their bicycles. They leave the house early and they get to work on time. Do they always take the bus? They usually take the bus. They sometimes ride their bicycles or 
Sometimes they ride their bicycles. Are they ever late? No, they are never late. Last but definitely not least, because writing is very important too. It says you're on vacation. Write a postcard to a friend. Write about the weather, the food, the hotel, the city you're visiting. All right? So it's on your own. It's up to you. And don't forget, writing is also important in learning any new language. All right? Good work. See you next time. Goodbye.